Hello plant lovers and welcome to this episode which is all about Miltoniopsis. I did do a basic care video about Miltoniopsis which I will just link up here so we probably don't need to go into all that but obviously since then mine has burst into bloom and so it seemed like a good idea just to check back in and go over a few details because a few things uh, become more apparent the more you grow such things. So welcome to Miltoniopsis Revisited. So firstly the name of this one is Miltoniopsis Kelly Spangled Banner and I think I have to say that just about all the Miltoniopsis have really silly names. I was trying to find out who they were named after and the Milton bit of Miltoniopsis turns out that they were named after a Viscount Milton in the early 19th century who was an avid orchid collector. There you go. As we know there is a little bit of a reputation out there that they're a bit, bit of hard work and they're a bit difficult. I would beg to differ and say they really are not. You can kind of treat them like a normal houseplant and you'll get beautiful blooms. So just some quick basics. They are a cool to intermediate orchid, so they can take fairly chilly temperatures, but I have got here my Burns Victim orchid to show you that in fact they can't take cold temperatures. Geographic location. I am in Melbourne, uh, southeast of Australia. It is now mid-spring. We are a temperate climate so we get cold damp winters that don't freeze and fairly hot extreme summers but the temperature can vary quite a lot. In summer is the equivalent of a zone 10 in the US and like parts of southeast England. I bought these from a local dealer who grows in the Melbourne area and he assured me that he grew them outside under a shade cloth protection so they get plenty of um, sun protection but no heating in winter. So I took his word at face value and plant lovers I'm here to tell you that in fact Miltoniopsis are a little cool sensitive. Uh, so a few nights over winter the temperature dropped to one degree Celsius which is 33 let's say degrees Fahrenheit. Cold, cold but didn't freeze and look what happened to this one. You can see how many of the leaves have been burnt and scarred and basically died and it happened overnight. I was so devastated. Now this one is called Burtfield Leash. You see? Crazy name. But anyway, this I think has a beautiful magenta flower. Um, so what I realized is that yes they, they like cool temperatures in winter but they don't like cold temperatures. So effectively what they love is the same temperatures that we love which makes them the ideal houseplant because they like a cooler winter, they like a warmer summer but they don't like extreme heat. Now we've been through this in the care so the other thing is they like strong filtered light and they like to be kept evenly moist without being overwatered. but don't let them dry out. Anyway enough of the Burns victim I'll come back to this. Let's talk about this beauty Kelly Spangled Banner. The flowers are very Miltoniopsis-like in that they're quite pansy-like and really huge. If you compare my hand to the bloom, it's kind of, they're really big. And here is the proof of my credential as a rank amateur is that I didn't realize that these orchids were fragrant. And I'm here to tell you, the fragrance is unbelievable. It's like, if you imagine a spicy marigold mix that you're about to sprinkle on some fabulous Indian dish. Kind of what it smells like. And when this bloomed for the first time for me I put it on the dining table so we could see it when we're having breakfast and lunch and dinner. And I thought what's that smell? And realized it was this orchid but it is such um, such a spicy fragrant smell. It's quite unusual. What I discovered as well is that this orchid has flowered twice in this year for me. It flowered in May of this year, autumn, and it has flowered now uh, in mid-spring. Now I feel that spring is its primary flowering period and I feel that late autumn is the gift with purchase bonus flowering season. So if you're lucky you can get two bloom periods and because these flowers last over a month you can have a lot of bloom time during the year. So it's kind of good value for money in terms of the decorative value of the orchid versus the amount of care it's got to be given. There are plenty of hybrids with amazing colors and speckles, monochrome, etc, etc. So do have a look. And I think just don't be afraid. I've had the strangest problem with this one. I don't know if you can see, but there were a couple of other flower spikes that came out this time. And in fact, there were two others. So I should have had three blooming flower spikes. 
And for some reason, they just got a little stuck in the sheath of the leaf at the base of the pseudobulb and they just didn't emerge properly. Now, I'm not quite sure why that was. It could have just been a freak of genetics and maybe the flower just, you know, didn't have the oomph to get through the leaf. But there could be other environmental factors as well. Sudden hot drafts, sudden cold spells, sudden change in temperature, being suddenly dry, being suddenly overwatered. Now, none of these things apply to this. The conditions were exactly the same and this flower spike has bloomed. So maybe it's just one of those things. Which brings us to the cycle of life. So you get a flower spike from the base of the pseudobulb and the flower spike emerges from the leaf and then up it goes. And it will appear from last season's growth. So the key to getting a good bloom is to make sure that you get lots of vegetative growth every spring. Now this one, as you can see, has become quite a big specimen from when I bought it. It shoots out new growths amazingly, which is great because you then stand more and more chance of getting more and more flower spikes as the season goes on. And they're quite vigorous growers. So I would say within a couple of seasons, you're gonna have a fairly large plant with multiple flower spikes every season, perhaps twice a year, which means you're gonna get a lot of bloom time and a lot of fragrance and a lot of beauty from the orchid. So that's good to know because a lot of orchids are very slow, but not this one. Early spring then is often a good time to repot before the flower spikes have emerged or after they've died before the new growths get too large. Um, spring is generally a good time to repot anything. But now let's look at the poor cousin that I bought because I was so entranced with this one and this was so easy to grow. But as we can see, look at this poor baby, it suffered. Now here's the thing about orchid life cycles and flowering cycles. This has got a lot of beautiful pseudo bulbs. And really this season, I should have got two or three flower spikes from it because it was mature enough and ready enough with some mature pseudo bulbs. But what did I do? I went and nearly killed it by freezing it to death this winter. So I think what I've effectively done is stymied any of these pseudo bulbs from flowering ever which is really annoying. But here's the great news is that it didn't actually die. So I trimmed off um, the damaged tips. But the great news is it is full of new growths coming out from the base of the pseudobulb. So it is healing itself. Problem is though, that those pseudobulbs are gonna take a year to mature before they flower. Through my mistreatment, it's gonna miss two flowering seasons. But hey ho, when it does flower, it will make me very happy because it has come back from the brink of death. Other lesson which I will show you is that this leaf here, as you can see, has a little bit of sunburn. So when I first got this and I knew nothing, I put it in a spot indoors with strong filtered light. So it was protected from direct sun, but it was very bright. It didn't die, but as you can see, it's got quite serious sunburn and these leaves do last for quite some time. So you are forever reminded of your miscare. <laughs> so it likes the same kind of light you'd give an Oncidium and in fact, the same kind of light you'd give to lots of orchids. And there you are. In Melbourne, I'm very lucky in that I can put these outside under protection, so under shade, um, for most of the year. The minute the temperatures start to drop below 10 degrees Celsius, and oh, forgive me what that is in Fahrenheit, let's say it's around 50 degrees Fahrenheit, bring them inside. But most of late spring and most of summer and early autumn, I will leave these outside. So there we go. I think Miltoniopsis are not that difficult. Don't be afraid, plant lovers, have a go. There are many, many, many beautiful hybrids out there. If you can get one of these from an orchid shop near you, oh, go for it. A spicy marigold, and who doesn't need that in your life? There we go, orchid lovers. Miltoniopsis follow-up 101. Feel free to ask me a question. I am an amateur struggling to find my way with orchids, but all of this is from my own experience growing orchids here in Melbourne in Southeast Australia. Thank you for watching and do hit like and do hit subscribe if you want some more videos. Um, all of these videos are made based on my own experience of growing things here because I couldn't find information that was quite specific to my area. So I hope this has helped you in some way. Next week, uh, an Australian orchid of mine is in bloom. So we might have a little look at that. In the meantime, take care wherever you are and I'll see you next week.